So this is a just the back of a sketchbook and I'm repurposing this. I saw this um, making texture plates yourself with modeling paste. So I'm going to try it with my tub of drywall wall compound and see how this works out because this is really inexpensive and um, if it does the job and works as well as I think it might, I'm going to save myself some major thing. So I actually saw this on a Jelly Arts um, video. So it's not my original idea, but I am definitely going to run with it. I might, I couldn't sleep. So I'm going to put this on. And I want it to be fairly smooth, so I'm using the credit card here instead of my palette knife. And I do a better job of it. One of the problems that I've come into is sometimes my small stencils are too small for my 8x10 um, jelly plate. So this may just allow me to get by that problem. So what we're going to do here, what we're doing is basically making our own texture plate building off of the stencil. Now you don't need to use a stencil and I'll show you that later on. And of course I'm not doing this first and then making sure it's all perfect to show you because you know that would make sense. And I figure you know win, lose, or draw we're gonna do it together. So there we go. I'm just kind of getting It's not going to be as perfect as if it was a single stencil or whatever, but if I can do this and have the, use these texture plates instead of mucking up my stencils, I might be a very happy crafter. So I'm just getting in little bits here and there. So I'm thinking they used a canvas board which I do have some but I'm thinking maybe this will work just as well. Just please remember always to clean your stencils right after you've used any kind of texture paste, be it drywall compound or this. So I'm going to dry that now and I will be back. So this time I'm going to make my texture paste using a larger bubble wrap. So I'm putting a layer of texture paste into this. This should be as even as possible just so when you press in it um, get an even pattern and I'm just pushing pressing in the bubble wrap pressing in and lifting up and so you can see the texture that that creates my third stencil I decided to use my roller printmaker roller and as you can see it's having a hard time rolling I wasn't happy with it so I just went back and forth so you could do that with anything putting a piece of piece of uh, plexiglass on top and lifting it up um, using a spoon a palette knife making any kind of marks so this one is the bottom of a plastic paper plate holder that I've cut out and I really like the you how it looks um, in my jelly prints but of course on a jelly print you have to keep moving it so I thought if I can get something a little bit bigger so I don't have to keep moving it 
One of my favorite stencils to use is my bubble stencil. It's a Donna Downey stencil, but it's small, so it doesn't quite fit. So my goal here is to use the texture paste to make a complete board of this. It is necessary to make this as smooth as possible so there are no gouges or holes. There was some that showed up later. Um, of course that makes your pattern unique. So I was going to dry it but it took a long time to dry. I left it overnight to dry. in the end. This I just dried in part so I could put this one next to it without disturbing the um, wall compound. And again, I'm just making my print more useful. I left the texture plates overnight to dry. So I'm getting out my jelly print, jelly plate, and I'm putting it on a plastic cutting board and yes you can see I, I didn't wait I actually tried to do some prints before they were dry disclaimer here I am not an expert jelly print maker I am still very much learning how to do things I do like brayering off in a phone book or a tour book or something on a book I often use those papers so there's the one made with the um, plastic picnic bath, picnic paper plate holder. So I'm just going to go through this very quickly so you can see that I am actually using the texture plates in the creation of the prints that you will see. I, as a viewer, that's something that I always want to see. I don't want to see you just create it. I want you to see, see what you create with it. I've marked the top and the bottom or the side of my texture plates. I do that to my stencils as well when I'm jelly printing because I like to use the same um, stencil or the same texture plate and just turn either the paper or the plate. Uh, I really like the effect that gives. So you can see I'm just using different colors different paints. I'm using my Liquitex Basics there. Later on I use my Delta Serum coats. Uh, whatever you have. I thought maybe I could get some paint off and get a print um, on that. No go. I did not seal my texture plates with Mod Podge. I think I will do that step just as proactively to see if they will stay longer. I was a little concerned that maybe there the grit from the wall compound was going to come off. It didn't on the jelly plate, which was good, but that would be something that I would watch for as the texture plate gets older. If it gets more brittle, I don't know. So that's something I'm going to watch for, and if you're following my video, please watch for it too. I would hate for you to... Um, wreck your jelly pr jelly plate because of this video. This was on the Jelly Arts YouTube channel, but they use brand texture paste, a modeling paste, and they use a canvas board. So I have taken some, making some changes here to make it cheaper, but there, it comes with a warning. There, with that print, it, it's very uneven. So I think I need to make sure that the layer of uh, wall compound is very much more even. And I definitely won't make any smaller ones that can't fit on my 8x10. I decided to get out my phone book. The phone book is exactly the right size for the 8x10 print and it really absorbs the wetness of the color of the paint and I like how it sometimes that little bit of print 
you get seeing through it. I really like that effect, so um, I can go to town. I'm, I'm trying to use up my Delta Serem coats that I've had from my folk art painting days, so it costs me nothing between that and the recycling of Reader's Digest and foam books to print on. Just having fun with the texture plates here. Karen Burchill. Hi everybody. This is the reveal of the prints that I've achieved using my homemade texture plates. This original idea was on the Jelly Arts YouTube channel. It is not my own, although I'm, I hit my head and said, why didn't I think of that? Now, I did a couple things different. They put their texture plates on canvas boards and they used modeling paste. So I have made two changes. I put on the backs of cardboard that I've gotten from the backs of some of my sketchbooks and um, palette paper pads. And it's a very compressed and pressed cardboard. I did not try it with any other background regular cardboard. I did not Mod Podge it first to seal it in any way. I would do that next time. I would seal it um, just to make sure that to eliminate the amount of moisture that can go in and maybe eliminate some of the warping. I would also seal it with the Mod Podge afterwards um, just to keep out any of the grit. Um, it from my project. There wasn't a whole lot there, but I am a little concerned as this gets older what's going to happen. So I'm going to be proactive in that respect and do that. The other thing that I didn't do that is necessary because it did cause problems. Um, if you see on the edges, there is little bits of the um, wall compound. So I just didn't take the time to cut that all off because that was breaking off and landing on my jelly plate and I want to take good care of that investment. So just using an X-Acto knife just cut off any of those little bits or things that are that may break off. And just be aware that what the condition of your texture plates is in because the texture plates you can you can make fairly inexpensively your jelly plate um, even if you're making your homemade ones they're not free so the goal here is to save money not to wreck your supplies so I just used the drywall compound from our home hardware in Canada this big jug here that is three kilograms um, it was like eight bucks, so it was very inexpensive. I I do use it as modeling paste on my projects. Um, I've had no ill effects at this point in time, but time will tell. So other than cleaning it up and polishing it, um, sealing it so that the fuzz, you know, maybe is a little proactive in protecting your stuff. Um, this worked extremely well. Um, this print here, this which I just did the roller over it and I just kind of suctioned it up. Very, very organic. The um, print, I'm just going to move that to the side and zoom in a little bit. The prints that I got from this are absolutely lovely. You know, very unique, very organic. This has a layer, a couple layers of that on there. Didn't matter which colors I used. Sometimes I put one, sometimes I put two. Um, it just is very, you know, put it on book paper. I just love it. You know, very unique. There's no way you're ever going to have something that somebody else has in there. Um, so that is the absolute, my absolute favorite of all of them. 
for doing it with found objects, I think, is the key. Um, now, on the Jelly Art site, they said, you know, you can do it with stencils. Why would you do that with a stencil if it was big enough? Well, one of the reasons is I don't like cleaning my stencils. Um, I don't like having them all paint encrusted because then when I use modeling paste in my art journaling, sometimes that comes off. Um, and I don't like cleaning them. There is an easy way to clean them, but I um, prefer not. So that would be one reason. You get a very, you kind of get a different print. Um, and you can also, if you have a smaller stencil, you can make it bigger. So, um, I have some gouges in here, the things that didn't settle, so I would, you know, be a little more careful, make it smoother and stuff. So this one, I only have a small stencil, and so I was able to make this big enough for my 8x10 jelly plate. So we have some lovely, I just love this Bubbles stan um, stencil, but short of buying a 12x12 12 12 one or a bigger one, um, this works. So I would do it in the case of that. So some of this is on jelly paper and I just kept, I used the same texture plate and I just moved, moved it and put it on different spots through three layers and stuff. So that's close. The other reason, this one, this was just um, the basket and again it was just one little thing so this allows me to have, do one print and much simpler and I really was enjoying how the prints that the, the the effect that this gave. So it was well worth my while to put it on a bigger sheet. So we have, you know, and just different layers. And you can just see the, the lovely layers. This one's very multicolored. I was just playing around with color. As I said, I am not a jelly print expert by any means. I have struggles. This one was made with the big bubble wrap. I think I would look for a little more consistency. Um, I didn't spread it thin enough, so it was a little bit uneven. But, you know, again, you get a very, very lovely kind of organic print. Nobody else is going to have that. So in a collage piece, you know, different colors, I would just try it again to get more consistency. That one turned out rather well and stuff. So again, we kind of combos. Um, this was the print that I was least satisfied with and I think the reason for that is I, I went super thin. The stencil itself is super thin and so it was hard to build up the texture paste. Um, but again, this stencil was very, very tiny, so this allowed me to get a bigger stencil. I would like to do this one again on a full size, so I can have it on 8x10, because I really like the pattern that it gives. Um, you know, mixing with colors and stuff. And this way, if you are doing a collage piece and you need flower petals, you have a whole sheet of it, and it's fairly consistent. So, homemade texture plates with wall compounds, found objects, and cardboard. Two thumbs up. Great DIY. The possibilities are only limited by your imagination. Um, come back. Show me what you've created with your homemade texture plates. I'm going to go through all my found articles and see what else I can come up with. As you watch and see the prints that I got during my jelly printing uh, with my texture plates, I just wanted to take this time to thank all of you subscribers for watching my videos, for commenting. Um, it was an exciting year. I ventured into the world of art journaling and mixed media, making YouTube videos, and now my blog. And I just wanted to thank all of you because your consistent watching and commenting really means a lot to me. I, if you haven't checked out my blog, please do so. You can find me at www.creativekatie.wordpress.com 
sometimes there will be similar blog posts sometimes there will be exclusive things that are just for my followers on my blog I can also be found on Twitter at creative Katie four again thank you for subscribing if you haven't subscribed hit the subscribe button and you can also choose to be notified of whenever I post a new video and you won't miss any of them happy new year happy creating